Okay, 1988 AB3. Uh, we have a slight variation on these types of problems um, showing up in Part B of this one. Part A is uh, kind of a uh, standard, if not an easy version of these problems. So we have this hyperbola, x squared minus y squared is equal to 9. And uh, we're working in the first quadrant, so we only really need that uh, part that is to the right of the y-axis and even that part that's above the x-axis. But anyway, it, it is a standard hyperbola centered at the origin and its vertex is at x equals 3. Alright, so what we want to do then is to find the volume of the solid generated. Now we also have another line which is the line x equals y. Sorry, x equals 5. And so we're going to get something that looks like that. And what we want to do, this is a, a solid, it's not an area between two curves, and we're only working with the first quadrant here. So this is going to be a disk, not even a washer. There's no, uh, we're not going to stamp out an inside function or an inside circle from this. So it's just a series of infinitely thin disks with, uh, with some volume, and we're going to add them all up. And remember that the volume of the disk is just pi r squared h, where h is going to be the dx here. So v is equal to pi. Integral is going to go from 3 to 5. r squared, we do need to solve that uh, hyperbola for y, and that's just uh, y is equal to the square root of x squared minus 9. So that's pi capital, that's pi r squared. And you'll see how that's going to work out very easily because we square the square root and it'll just come out to be pi times the integral from 3 to 5 of x squared minus 9 dx. And we can go right ahead and begin to integrate that. x squared is going to become x to the third over 3 minus 9x and that's from 3 to 5. So we are going to have a second expression in there so I set up um, place to, to put that. The first one is going to be 5 to the third, which is 125 over 3, minus 45. And the second expression is going to be 9 minus 27. And that all comes out to be 44 pi over 3. Okay, I'm going to scroll up then to do the second part of this. Now the wrinkle in this particular problem is that we're not revolving it around the line um, around the y-axis, we're revolving around the line x equals negative 1. And so it's basically the same, but we're going to get a little bit larger radius here, and we'll have to take care of that, account for that in our integral formula. And so we're going to get a cylindrical shell, not the greatest, but looking something like that. Setting up the formula again, it's pretty straightforward. It's 2 pi r h. Again, still, we're only going to integrate from 3 to 5. And that doesn't change there. Um, the radius now is not going to be x, but it's going to be the x value minus negative 1, or x plus 1. You can see the 1 that's to the left of the y-axis, so it'll be the x value plus 1 more. And that's going to be the radius for each cylindrical shell that we work with. Wherever the x value stops, we're going to add 1 more, and that will become the new radius. And then the rest of it is just h, which is the height of the curve, and that is just uh, square root of x squared minus 9 dx. And so that's all we're going to need to do for that particular volume. And that does it. So uh, sometimes you'll be asked to revolve around a, a vertical line that's other than the y-axis. And sometimes you'll be asked to revolve around a horizontal line that's other than the x-axis. But you can see that all we do there is just going to be x minus whatever that number is. In this case, it's minus negative 1, which comes out to be x plus 1 is our new radius. If it were around the y-axis, excuse me, around the x-axis, it would be y minus.